Peace be with everyone. And most of all, we would like to thank everyone for being present with the Third Full Angels Ministries. We know it's been a long day. However, we'd like to thank everybody for being present. And for those that have been viewing uh, live, we want to thank you. And while you can, and if you're able, uh, please send the message to your brothers and sisters and to the strangers. If you have an email account, Send it via email. Send it out. People need to know this message. And by the way, while you're doing that, you're evangelizing the three angels' messages, brothers and sisters. Can we hear a name? <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy holy name. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, your highness, we come before you, that you may speak through me and open the citadel and the minds that they may receive thy message. Prepare us for your coming. Prepare us for the sealing as the third angel is going forward with that overwhelming patience. Find us faithful to be written in the book of life and the book of remembrance. For the glory of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray and ask that while I am preaching and teaching and sharing this message, that thou will teach me once again and bring to my remembrance what all that thou hast taught me. We claim John 14, verse 26, and we praise your holy name, your highness. Thank you for the trials and the blessings that we have received. For thy glory and for thy sake, in the name of Yeshua, amen. <coughs> As we view, we will take a quick study. The correct chapter here in the 1884 Great Controversy, and while I'll share with us here, that chapter is coming from a book that has been prepared, entitled The Great Controversy Between Christ and His Angels and Satan and His Angels, comparing the 1911 Great Controversy and the 1884 Great Controversy. That information you'll find in this hardback cover that also has a DVD in it. This book, ladies and gentlemen, is $87. The purpose for that is because men and women have not read the book, they hid the messages, they changed the messages, and the book has just been trifled with and thrown around like dust. Ladies and gentlemen, now we pay the price to publish it, to buy the ink, the paper, and to pay for the machines and the labor that is used to publish the book. Ladies and gentlemen, this book is available. It is available for the 144,000 that will teach the message for the remaining multitude that will come out of Babylon. And including those that are in Babylon, 
where the 144,000 will come out. Review and Herald, Volume 1, page 18. Revelation chapter 18, Revelation chapter 14, and Revelation chapter 7. Ladies and gentlemen, that fourth angel is Yeshua HaMashiach that is overwhelmingly surprising us with his messages in these last days. The correct title here, ladies and gentlemen, is in Roman Numbers, which is chapter 36. The correct numbers here and the correct title is The Coming Conflict. So while I am giving this study, ladies and gentlemen, everything in the black and the blue is correct. It's out of the 1884 Great Controversy. And when you read the black and the red, it's all from the 1911 Great Controversy, 1907, 1888, 1887, and the 1911 and the, the book entitled The Great Hope. This is what they did to our messages. This is what they tried to do to destroy and disassemble the remnant. But the Philadelphia Church goes through, brothers and sisters. It goes through. It is a purity people that have got the message and given the message in love and care. They don't fear the coronavirus. They don't fear the AIDS. They don't fear the HIV because they know that by obeying the laws, the health laws, the civil laws, religious laws, the precepts, the statutes, and the ordinances, that they were sealed for eternity. And they have a job to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to preach the word and prepare for the second coming. What I'd like to do this morning, ladies and gentlemen, is I will be reading while we focus on the screen. I'd like you to turn to your Bibles, whatever version you might choose to use, but I'll be reading from the Texas Receptus, and I'd like you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, and we will begin with verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 10. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boosting in the regions of Achia. Verse 11. Question. Wherefore, because I love you not, Elohim knoweth. Verse 12. But what I do, that I do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. Verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, claiming and thinking that they're doing the acts of Yeshua HaMashiach. Verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Mercy. Whose end shall be according to their works, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, now we will focus on this topic, the coming conflict. And what they did in the 1911 Great Controversy, which is your favorite, incorrect book. In the chapter, it reads, the impending conflict. Well, well, what impending conflict? It's the coming conflict. It's the coming conflict that we're transitioning into now, ladies and gentlemen. And as I read this prophecy, I'd like you to take note in what happened. In reading and in your hearing, the greatest and most favored nation upon the earth is the United States. A gracious providence has shielded this country and poured upon her the choices of heaven's blessings. Here the persecuted and oppressed have found refuge. Here the Christian faith in its purity has been taught. This people have been the recipients of great light and unrivaled mercies. But these gifts have been repaid by ingratitude and forgetfulness of God Elohim. Our Father who art in heaven, forgive us for transgressing thy Torah, for forgetting thy commandments. Restore unto us thy character and restore unto us your spirit, that we may be vessels of enlightenment that we may be refreshed by thy spirit. In the name of Yeshua we pray. Amen. Here the Christian faith in its purity has been taught. This people have been the recipients of great light and unwarbled mercies. However, in repeating, but these gifts have been repaid by ingratitude. They don't care. They haven't sacrificed what it took Martin Luther, Huss, Jerome to do. And forgetfulness of Elohim and they've forgotten to read the 1884 Great Controversy series 
The Infinite One keeps a reckoning with the nations, and their guilt is proportioned to the light rejected. A fearful record now stands in the register of heaven against our land. But the crime which shall fill up the measure of her iniquity is that of making void the law of Elohim, God. And what they did, ladies and gentlemen, the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they turned around and seized and deceased publishing the Spirit of Prophecy books, volumes 1 through 4, which are here to my right. So this is the Spirit of Prophecy, volume 1, 2, 3, and 4. The fourth one is the 1884 Great Controversy. And to my right are books of the New Order, Conflict of the Ages, that are of the devil himself. Ladies and gentlemen, Alan White had nothing to do with these books. She didn't dictate these books. Acts of the Apostles, ladies and gentlemen, was rewritten, which is the original book, Life Sketches of Paul. This book that I have here, if I may pull it out, or better yet, I have another one over here. I have another one over here that I'd like to share. Uh, where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? Life Sketches, I don't want that one. I want the Life Sketches of Paul. Bear with me. Life Sketches of Paul, ladies and gentlemen, is actually the real book that was actually published for the specific purpose of emphasizing the Holy Spirit. So in Life Sketches, we also understand, here's Life Sketches, this is Life Sketches, and there is another one that I want to share with us that you might not be familiar of, and if you give me a few seconds, I'll bring it up. This book entitled Sketches from the Life of Paul is the original book. And what they did, they got Acts of the Apostles, they got Acts of the Apostles, and they rewrote it to suit their fallen nature of preconceived ideas. This is the original book. Life Sketches of Paul, and they rewrote it into Acts of the Apostles. And so Acts of the Apostles is this one right here. Here's Acts of the Apostles, ladies and gentlemen. That's Acts of the Apostles right here. And they rewrote it to fit their own fancy. In other words, these men and women were directed by evil spirits to rewrite the writings of the prophet. You don't do that. And so I do not expect to see them in the kingdom out of my research of these many years. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't trifle with the messages. We don't trifle with the souls of salvation that are you, my brothers and sisters, that are alive today witnessing these messages. Continuing. A fearful record now stands in the register of heaven of what has occurred then and what's occurred now and what is coming. The laws of man and the precepts of Yehovah will come the last great conflict of the great controversy between truth and error. Upon this battle we are now entering in 2020, a battle not between rival churches contending for the supremacy, but between the religion of the Bible and the religion of fable and tradition. The agencies which will unite against truth and righteousness in this contest are now actively at work. God's holy word we're referring to his Bible. That's his holy word, brothers and sisters. His holy word. Okay? Righty dividing the word of truth. And I'll read it again. God's holy word, which has been handed down to us at such a cost of suffering and blood, is but little value. The Bible is within the reach of all, but there are few who really accept it as the guide of life. Infidelity prevails to an alarming extent. Not in the world merely but in the church. Many have come to deny doctrines which are the very pillars of the Christian faith. The great facts of creation as presented by the inspired writers, the fall of man, the atonement, which is a moedim, the atonement is a moedim, and the perpetuity of the law, referring to the to perpetuity of the Torah of God, are practically rejected by a large share of the professedly Christian world, who are only in the churches in name only. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a prophecy that has already been fulfilled and continuing to accelerate. Thousands who pride themselves upon their wisdom and independence regard it an evidence of weakness to place implicit confidence in the Bible and a proof of superior talent and learning to cavil at the scriptures and to spiritualize and explain away their most important truths. Many ministers are teaching their people 
and many professors and teachers are instructing their students that the law of Elohim has been charged, no, has been changed. This is what they're teaching. Or abrogated, and they ridicule those who are simple-minded as to acknowledge all its claims. Everything in the blue and the red has been interchanged. So everything in the blue, ladies and gentlemen, was omitted, and then they inserted everything in the red. In rejecting the truth, men reject its author. Very simple. No error accepted by the Christian world strikes more boldly against the authority of heaven. None is more directly opposed to the dictates of reason. None is more pernicious in its results than the modern doctrine so rapidly gaining ground that God's law is no longer obligatory upon men. It would be far more consistent for nations to abolish their statutes and permit the people to do as they please. Then for the ruler of the universe to annul his law and leave the world without a standard to condemn the guilty or justify the obedient. Can I hear an amen? amen? Would we know the result of making void the law of God? The experiment has been tried. Terrible were the scenes enacted in France when atheism became the controlling power. There it is. Atheism became the controlling power. And when atheism declared that Yahweh does not exist and they rejected him, ladies and gentlemen, all hell broke loose in France. So Napoleon Bonaparte sent General Berthier to Rome to take the Pope off the scene of a Pope. While Pius VII was also incarcerated, so the Pope endured one year and traveled in distance to various different prisons and died a year later. So Napoleon Bonaparte turned around and established a law which was entitled Religious Liberty, that was inserted and removed persecution. So the wound that was inflicted upon the conclave of cardinals was religious liberty that was inserted, which seized the persecution. And these last days, what is it's coming, ladies and gentlemen? We don't know the day and the hour, but it's going to be persecution. So our Second Amendment, our Fourteenth Amendment, would be amended. The Constitution has already been repudiated. The Bill of Rights, right along with it. Now there is room to remove the Second Amendment and the Fourteenth Amendment. Ladies and gentlemen, you think I'm joking. I'm not. You can fight and protest all you want, Virginia. But the guns, the Second Amendment and the Fourteenth Amendment are gone. There's only a little time when the force will come in and the guns will be obliterated in this country. Civil war will begin and many people will die without a cause. In other words, they're not obeying the commandments, they're not obeying the fourth commandment, the seal that has been given to us freely for a cost. Wherever the divine precepts are set aside, sin ceases to appear sinful or righteousness desirable, those who refuse to submit to the government of God are wholly unfitted to govern themselves. Can I hear an amen? Those who disregard the commandments of God show disobedience to reap disobedience. The marriage vow would no longer stand as a sacred bulwark to protect the family. He who had the power would, if he desired, take his neighbor's wife by violence. The fifth commandment would be set aside with the fourth. So the fifth commandment is, Honor thy father and thy mother. The fourth commandment is, Remember the Sabbath to keep it co holy. Six days shall you labor from Sunday to Friday. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Elohim thy Yahweh. Thou is a commandment that has been blessed, sanctified, and made holy. Children would not shrink from taking the life of their parents, which is being done now, if by so doing they could obtain the desire of their corrupt hearts. The civilized world would become a horde of robbers and assassins, and peace, rest, and happiness would be banished from the earth. This is what's taking place now all over the world. So you notice here that in parents, they removed the comma. In blue, they removed it. It's supposed to be a comma there. Already the doctrine that men are released from obedience to God's requirements has weakened the force of moral obligation and opened the floodgates of iniquity upon the world. Lawlessness, dissipation, and corruption are sweeping in upon us like an overwhelming tide. In the family, Satan is at work. His banner waves even in professionally Christian households. 
There is envy, evil submission, hypocrisy, estrangement, emulation, strife, betrayal of sacred trust, indulgence of lust. The whole system of religious principles and doctrines which should form the foundation and framework of social life seems to be tottering mass. Tottering mass. Ready to fall to ruin the violence of criminals when thrown into prison for their offenses are often made the recipients of gifts and attentions as if they had attained an inviolable distinction. Donald Trump, releasing all the people who were for him or against him, is doing this. Can you imagine what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, how corrupt the system of the institutions of the prisons in the North American Division is? Continuing. The press publish the revolting details of vice, thus initiating others into the practice of fraud, robbery, and murder. And Satan exalts in, in the success of his holy shames the infutation of vice, the wanton taking of life, terrible increase of intemperance and, in, and iniquity, iniquity, and of every order and degree should arouse all who fear God to inquire what can be done to stay the tide of evil. Course of justice are corrupt. Prophecy is going as forward as it should be. Rulers are actuated by desire for gain and love of pl sen uh, sensual pleasure, like the Rothschilds. Intemperance has beclouded the faculties of many, so that Satan has almost complete control of them. Jurists are perverted, bribed, deluded, drunkenness and rivalry, passion, envy, dishonesty of every sort are represented among those who administer the laws. Justice stands in the far off, for truth is falling in the street and iniquity cannot enter. Scripture has been removed, which is the doctrines and the teachings that have been dictated by the prophet. As the religious organizations of the day have refused to listen to unpopular truths plainly brought to view in the scriptures, they have shown broadcast the seeds of skepticism, clinging to the papal air of natural mortality of man's consciousness and death, in death. They reject the only defense against the delusions of spiritualism, nor is this all as the claims of the fourth commandment are urged upon the people, popular teachers, found that the observance of the seventh-day Sabbath is there enjoyed, and as the only way to free themselves from a duty which they are unwilling to perform, they declare that the law of God is no longer binding. And this is what Sunday pastors are teaching throughout the world. We will continue to start here. And uh, here we will focus on spiritualism. Protestants will yet stretch her hands across the gulf to grasp the hand of spiritualism. She will reach over the abbeys to, to down, down. Hold it right there. She will reach over the abbeys to clasp hands with the Roman power. This has been fulfilled, ladies and gentlemen. And under the influence of this threefold union, our country will follow in the steps of Rome in trampling on the rights of conscience. 1884 Great Controversy, 405, paragraph 1. Now, here's the key. Spiritualism is now changing its form, biding some of its more objectionable and immoral features and assuming a Christian guise. Formerly it denounced Christ and the Bible. Now it professes to accept both. The Bible is interpreted in a manner that is attractive to the renewed heart. While its solemn and vital truths are made of no effect, a God of love is presented, but his justice, his denunciations of sin, the requirements of his holy law are all kept out of sight. Pleasing bewitching fables captivate the senses of those who do not make God's word the foundation of their faith. Christ is as barely rejected as before, but Satan, here's the rascal, but Satan has so blinded the eyes of the people that the deception is not discerned. As spiritualism assimilates more closely to the nominal Christian or the nominal Christianity of the day, it has greater power to deceive and ensnare 
Satan himself is converted after the modern order of things. He will appear in the character of an angel of light through the agency of spiritualism. Miracles will be wrought, the sick will be healed, and many undeniable wonders will be performed by him. And as the spirits will profess faith in the Bible and express regard for Sunday, their work will be accepted as a manifestation of divine power. This is what's going on now, ladies and gentlemen. Spiritualism. Spiritualism at its fullest. This is what's coming in Laudato Si. So we persuade the Senate to comprehend and understand what is taking place. They will reject and do a do not pass on H.R. 9. It has not passed. It's being tabled. Now, what I'd like us to do at this point, ladies and gentlemen, is that I would like us to go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 4. Uh, just my back a little bit, stretching. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 4. What chapter? Four. Matthew chapter 4. And if you can, I'd like you to grasp your Bibles there. And uh, bear with me. Go to Matthew chapter 4. <coughs> Matthew chapter 4. And I'll give you a few seconds so you can grab your Bibles. There's nothing wrong with drinking some nice, good tea. Warm. Thank you. So we're going to go to Matthew chapter 4. And let's begin with verse 1. Yes. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. And this was in the, may I say, crisis of the temptations that were given to Christ. In verse 1, Then was Yeshua led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now, once again, we are going to experience the one hour of temptation. So we need to be prepared for it. Verse 2, Matthew chapter 4. We're in verse 2 now. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, whoa, that's a long time, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of Elohim, command that these stones be made bread. Verse 4, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word and that proceedeth out of the mouth of Elohim. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and sitteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. Ladies and gentlemen, this same experience that Yeshua experienced is the same experience that we will experience. We're all going to go through it in different phases, but we're all going to be tested. Why? Because there's a ceiling taking place that we have to be vexed to find out if we're truly overcoming our fallen nature, sin. Now, as we look at, as we view the screen, I'd like us to view the screen i like us to view the screen. We have a few key points that we're going to emphasize on. Number one, Christ is barely rejected before, as before, but Satan has so blinded the eyes of the people that the deception is not discerned in the church and out of the church and in leadership. Now, bear with me. As spiritualism assimilates more closely to the nominal Christianity of the day. Now notice what it's saying, nominal Christianity of the day. It has greater power to deceive and ensnare. Satan himself is converted after the modern order of things. He will appear in the character of an angel of light. Now what it's saying here, as well as the Bible, is that Satan himself is going to appear as an angel of light. He will be in the stature that he is, and he will be exposing himself that he is an angel of light, that he is Christ, walking the earth. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there ain't going to be no rapture. Christ, when he returns back, the angels nor Christ shall walk the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, it is only the righteous who are resurrected who will be ascending to the kingdom. And those that will be ascending and transformed are the 144,000. They will not see death nor taste it. These will be translated and transformed in the twinkling of an eye. Can I hear an amen? This amen. you should amen. be rejoicing. Amen. And be praying that you be among them. Once again, 
he will appear in the character of an angel of light. Through the agency of spiritualism, miracles will be wrought, the sick will be healed, and many undeniable wonders will be performed. So therefore, coronavirus is coming back. You see, the medicine of man cannot heal, ladies and gentlemen. It is only through Yeshua HaMashiach, through prayer, and through Bible study, and consecration, that we are attending. We are taking hold and touching the seat seats on the right hand side of Yeshua and asking for his virtue, brothers and sisters. That's right. Asking for his virtue, his healing, holy hands. Continuing, once again, through the agency of spiritualism, miracles will be wrought, the sick will be healed, and many undeniable wonders will be performed. And as the spirits will profess faith in the Bible and express regard for Sunday, their work will be accepted as the manifestation of divine power. 18 for Great Controversy, 405, paragraph 3. Everything in the blue was omitted so you wouldn't have no idea what was being said. The line of distinction between professing Christians and the ungodly is now hardly distinguishable. Church members love what the world loves and are ready to join with them. And Satan determines to unite them in one body and thus strengthen his cause by sweeping all into the ranks of what, ladies and gentlemen? Spiritualism. This is what he's doing. This is his power. Papists, who boast of miracles as a certain mark of the true church, will be ready to readily, excuse me, deceived by this wonder-working power, and Protestants having cast away their, the shield of truth will also be deluded. Papists, Protestants, and Rollings will alike accept the form of godliness without the power, which is the Spirit of the Father, and they will see in this union a grand movement for the conversion of the world and the ushering in of the long-expected millennium. Through spiritualism, Satan appears as a benefactor of the race, healing the diseases of coronavirus of the people, and professing to present a new and more exalted system of religious faith, Laudato Si. I inserted that. But at the same time, he works as a destroyer. His temptations are leading multitudes to ruin, intemperance, dethrones reason, sensual indulgence, strife, and bloodshed follow. Satan delights in war, mercy. For it excites the worst passions of the soul and then sweeps into eternity its victims steeped in vice and blood. It is his object to incite the nations to war against one another, for he can thus divert the minds of the people from the work of preparation to stand in the day of Elohim. Great Controversy, page 406, paragraph 2. Satan works through the elements also to garner his harvest of unprepared souls, which is now being done with an overwhelming surprise. He has studied the secrets of the laboratories of nature, and he uses all his power to control the elements as far as God allows. When he was, up, when he was suffered to afflict Job, how quickly flocks and herds, servants, houses, children were swept away. One trouble succeeding another as in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, I inserted that, it is God that shields his creatures and hedges them in form in from the power of the destroyer. But the Christian world has shown contempt for the law of Yehovah and the Yahweh does just what he has declared that he would do. He withdraws his blessings, which is his spirit, from the earth and removes his protecting care from those who are rebelling against his law and teaching and forcing others to do the same. Satan has control of all whom Elohim does not especially guard. He will favor and prosper some in order to further his own designs, and he will bring trouble upon others and lead men to believe that it is God who is afflicting man. While appearing to the children of men as a great physician who can heal all their maladies, he will bring disease, coronavirus, AIDS, HIV, and disaster until populous cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. Even now he is at work in accidents and calamities by sea and by land. This is all taking place and you all know it. In a great conflagration, 
conflagrations, in fierce tornadoes and terrific hailstorms, in tempests, floods, cyclones, tidal waves, and earthquakes. In every place and in a thousand forms is Satan exercising his power. He sweeps away the ripening harvest, the famine and distress follow. He imparts to the air the daily tent of Cornoa virus, and thousands perish by the pestilence. These visitations are to follow. He imparts to the air a deadly tent of Cornoa virus, and thousands perish by the pestilence. These visitations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. Destruction will be upon the inhabitants of the world. The beast of the field will groan, and the earth will languish. And then the great deceiver will persuade men that those who serve God are causing these evils. The class that have provoked the displeasure of heaven will charge all their troubles upon the faithful few whom the Yahweh has sent to them with messages of warning, Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 to 12, and reproof. It will be declared that the nation is offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath, that this is it, that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced, and that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment, thus destroying reverence for Sunday, are troublers of the nation, prevent, preventing its restoration to divine favor and temporal prosperity. Ladies and gentlemen, what it is saying here is it. Uh, Time to separate the wheat and the terror is right around the corner. Men and women and children are going to suffer. And it would be better, ladies and gentlemen, that a lot of people wouldn't be born because of backsliding and knowing the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time now to get your house ready and to start preparing to get into the country and into the mountains and start learning to live as a hermit, because this is what's coming. Now, if I may, I am, I am going to gently bring something to our attention that's very, very important, and I won't take too much of our time. The anatomy of physiology is being tried. Leviticus chapter 11 is referring to the health laws. Our skin has the epidermis, has the dermis, and hyperburn. Okay, so these three layers is where a lot of the essential oils can penetrate and go through the areas that need to be healed. So I emphasize essential oils because essential oils is medicine that our Savior created. This here, ladies and gentlemen, is a cell. It's the nucleus in the center. This is the cell membrane that's on the outside. Okay, this cell needs to be fed correct nutrients. And if it's not fed correct nutrients, we're going to degenerate very quickly, okay? Now, our ears need to be clean. Our ears need to be focused vertically and horizontally so we can hear the small, still voice of our Savior calling us. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we as a people have to understand that as our pupils are able to see at this moment, we need to ask Yeshua HaMashiach to remove the scales off our eyes so we can comprehend what is taking place so that he can help us to be converted and to prepare for baptism. Now, I've shared many times, ladies and gentlemen, that you need to take care of your throat, you need to take care of your thyroid, and you need to take care of it and understand that you got four days to gargle with vinegar and water throughout the day and gargle with four tablespoons of iodine salt along with lukewarm water. Gargle with it throughout the day so it can kill that bacteria and help to get rid of that germ. Therefore, after the four days, ladies and gentlemen, if that has been completed, then you shouldn't have no problem with your lungs. Because that coronavirus is going to hit these lungs, ladies and gentlemen, and that's when the war is going to start. That's when you're not going to be able to breathe very well, and you're going to need much, much help. This is why I've emphasized four different uh, medicines that you can use for prevention. And you can see the slides that I've given to us. Now, for your liver, you can use 7 ounces of parsley, 7 ounces of spinach, and 10 ounces of celery. Make sure that you can juice them throughout the week. 
For those that have severe liver problems, juice them three times a day before your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, 90 days. And then you go see the doctor. This liver is able to heal itself, which is the only component in the anatomy and physiology, ladies and gentlemen. So in your, right lo in your left lobe, you actually have to understand what it's consisting of, as well as your right lobe, that I won't share this morning. Now, it is the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, that is preparing us to receive the latter rain. You have to understand that you have to receive the latter rain, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, today, now. And if you're not receiving, it's because you're not asking. Money's not going to buy the latter rain. It is going to take intellectual studies to understand the first five books of the Bible that you have to understand and memorize. You have to understand what statutes 2707, 2708 is. It's feminine. It's permanently binding. It's part of the seals. The health message. The fifth uh, commandment to honor thy dad and thy mother. The statutes are referring to worship, ladies and gentlemen. Leviticus chapter 23. They're in the feminine. They're permanently binding. What's happened? The latter rain needs to be pleaded for as never before. You want to ask your dad for some candy? You want to ask your dad for money? Well, just as much as you beg your dad for things that you have need or your mother, you need to get on our knees and ask for the latter rain. It is needed prior to getting into the kingdom. No one will be in the kingdom without the statues, ladies and gentlemen. There ain't going to be one soul in the kingdom that does not obey and keep the statutes. Let me read it to us. <clears throat> in reading in your hearing, and I will read Signs of the Times, 9 8, 1887. God will not take into his kingdom and give eternal life to those who will not come under his laws and his statutes in this life in 2020. Our second reference is found in Signs of the Times, February 3rd, 1888 message. In these last days, there is a call from heaven inviting you to keep the statutes and ordinances of the Yahweh. Now, to understand this, ladies and gentlemen, if you read Exodus chapter 21, 22, and 23, it elaborates each one of the Ten Commandments. Matter of fact, it elaborates 613 laws. You can go to Deuteronomy. And you can also see the same thing. In Deuteronomy, you can also read chapter 26, 27, and 28. Man shall not lay with man. Woman shall not lay with woman. These are the key points, ladies and gentlemen. This is why destruction is coming. It's because of people's faults of immorality and lust and sexual activity and whoredom and whoring around has occurred. This is why it's coming. But the righteous are not going to suffer these plagues. I can guarantee you that. There are going to be many pastors that are not going to be in the kingdom. There are going to be many evangelists that are not going to be in the kingdom. Many presidents of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and other denominations ain't going to be in the kingdom. I guarantee you that. You do not compromise this message. This is the 144,000 message, brothers and sisters. This isn't no hip-hop, scop, and cheap message. This is the message, straightforward, straight testimony, present truth. And then the great deceiver will persuade men that those who serve God are causing these evils. No, we're not. You're causing it. It will be declared that the nation is offending God by violating the Sunday Sabbath. No, we're not. This is why Laudato Si is coming in. is because people were asked to sit down and not to give the three angels messages. Thus the accusation urged of old against the servant of God will be repeated. Bear with me. And upon grounds equally well, well established. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he the trouble of Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou, Ahab, and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Yahweh, and thou hast followed Balaam, President Donald Trump. You follow Balaam. You are the troubler of the house. All you presidents since the beginning of finding the North American division. 
And it was the only country that was prophesied that would come up and be able to allow people from other countries to come in while you enslaved and you killed the Afro-Americans and brought them to this country as slaves. And then you killed my ancestors, the Indians. And then you killed my other ancestors, the Spanish people, and you enslaved them as presidents and paid them low wages. This is reality. Judgments come. As the wrath of the people shall be excited by false charges, they will pursue a course towards God, God's ambassadors, very similar to that which the apostate Israel pursued towards Elijah. The miracle working power manifested through spiritualism will exert its influence against those who choose to obey God rather than men. Ladies and gentlemen, messages will come from the spirits declaring that God has sent them to inform the rejectors of Sunday that they are in error and, and that the laws of the land should be obeyed as the law of God. We rather represent ourselves as obeying the laws of Yahweh than the laws of man. Man's going to lead you to hell, brothers and sisters. Continuing. They will lament the great wickedness in the world and second the testimony of religious teachers that the degraded state of morals is caused by the desecration of Sunday. This is what they're going to be crying about. Great will be the indignation excited against all who refuse to accept their testimony. And so everything that you see here in the red, ladies and gentlemen, is what they inserted and they removed everything else. Those who honor the Bible Sabbath will be denounced as enemies of, the, of law and order, as breaking down the moral restraints of society, causing anarchy and corruption, and calling down the judgments of Elohim upon the earth. Their conscientious scruples will be pronounced obstancy, stubbornness, and contempt of authority. The dignitaries of church and state will unite to bribe, persuade, or compel all classes of, to honor the Sunday. The lack of divine authority will be supplied by oppressive enactments. Political corruption is destroying love of justice and regard for truth. And in order to secure public favor, legislators will yield to the popular demand for a law enforcing Sunday observance, liberty of conscience, which has cost this nation so great a sacrifice, will no longer be respected in the soon coming conflict. We shall see exemplified the prophet's words. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Elohim and have the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. Our land is in jeopardy. And then they remove this out of your books, brothers and sisters. Our land is in jeopardy. The time is drawing on when its legislators shall so adjourn the principles of Protestantism as to give conscience to Romish apostasy. The people for whom God has so marvelously wrought, strengthening them to throw off the galling yoke of popery, will by a national act give vigor to the corrupt faith of Rome, and thus arouse the tyranny which, will only, which only awaits for a touch to start again into cruelty and despotism. With rapid steps, we are already approaching this period. When Protestant churches shall seek the support of the secular power, thus following the example of that apostate church, for opposing which their ancestors endured the fiercest persecution, then will there be a national apostasy which will end only in national ruin. 1884 Great Controversy, page 410. And I will read here, if you may, turn with me to Daniel, Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. For those that are present, I'd like you to turn with me to Daniel chapter 2, please. Daniel chapter 2. Let's go to the prophecy of Daniel. We have had many Nebuchadnezzars. Many Nebuchadnezzars. Time and time again. But in Daniel chapter 2, verse 43, reads as follows. <clears throat> and whereas thou sawest iron clay with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. The word seed here is referring to the sperm. Okay? Or these people will have intercourse with each other with all the nations in Europe. Europe is hit hard with the Panola virus, and hundreds of the people are dying. Ladies and gentlemen, there is so much sin in Europe, specifically France and Germany. Ladies and gentlemen, in Germany, when you go down to Frankfurt, Germany, down to the red light districts, 
It's a mile, mile long, ladies and gentlemen. And at night, everybody, all the horse come out, and that red light district is all in red. And you got all the horse standing outside the doors and the balconies, waiting for all the people to come in so they can go ahead and be paid and they can have intercourse with them. Breaking the commandment. This is what Germany's about. And this is just a segment. In other locations, you find them smoking dope every which way. And now that marijuana has been legal, ladies and gentlemen, you find people all dumbed down like zombies and like the devil. This is what it's all about. However, in NATO, in, in Germany itself, there are no more military bases. They removed them all. Even the base where I was stationed. They're in Darmstadt, Germany. And I live down the road from there. Ladies and gentlemen, the ones that occupy these institutions are German armies. And the only ones that are left is the Air Force. This is how it looks. This place, ladies and gentlemen, has been turned upside down with drugs. And the devil loves it. This is his character of immorality. Now I'm going to share a prophecy in regards to the Seventh-day Adventist Church that he was already given. In reading your hearing, your reference is found in Manuscript 63, 1899. We have come to a time when God's sacred work is represented by the feet of the image in which the iron was mixed with merry clay. God has a people, a chosen people, whose discernment must be sanctified, number one, who must not become unholy by laying upon the foundation wood, hay, and stubble. Every soul who is loyal to the commandments of God will see that the distinguishing feature of our faith is the seventh day Sabbath. Amen? Amen? Number two. If the government would honor the Sabbath as God has commanded, it would stand in the strength of God and in the defense of the faith once delivered to the saints. But statesmen, political men, ladies and gentlemen, political men and men and women, will uphold the spirit Sabbath referred to Sunday and will mingle their religious faith with the observance of this child of the papacy, placing it above the Sabbath, which the Yahweh has sanctified and blessed, setting it apart for man to keep holy as a sign between him and his people to a thousand generations. Amen? Here's the key. The mingling of churchcraft and statecraft is represented by the iron and the clay. This union is weakening all the power of the churches. This investing the church with the power of the state will bring evil results. Men have almost passed the point of God's forbearance. They have invested their strength in politics and have united with the papacy. But the time will come when God will punish those who have made void his law and their evil work will recall upon themselves. Manuscript 63, 1899. Barry Black. Hmm? Also the surgeon, Ben Carson, and also other political religious men that work in the department of the government and governments of the Seventh-day Adventist Church are employed with our government. Now there's nothing wrong with it, brothers and sisters. But when it comes down to the fourth commandment and they're breaking it and they're working it, they're breaking the commandments. Plain and simple. Now, in these issues that have been given to us, is a prophecy in regards to people within the Seventh-day Adventist Church and what they would do prior to it occurring. This prophecy was already given before it even begun, ladies and gentlemen. So is it by any chance that we as a people have been blinded and dumbed down on the scriptures to understand what is righteousness, what is justification, what is forgiveness, and what we have to do as a people is to endure with Christ? Though the Rain, the rains and the snow blow away, ladies and gentlemen. Christ is still present with us. He is longing to help us through these trials. Ladies and gentlemen, what is occurring now are trials. These are the temptations that are befalling upon our people. That they themselves will learn that they have to graduate. They have to pass the test. There is not one soul that ain't going to be in the kingdom that ain't going to be tried. And if you're not willing to be tried, brothers and sisters, then we need to pray for you more than ever. Feel free to call us. We may pray for you. We're not here to condemn, to bring out the correct messages that have once been given to the remnant and that were changed to suit fallen human beings. 
I will read a, another reference. This one's found in Special Testimonies, Series B, number two and seven. And the first one here that I will be reading is found on uh, page 38. Uh, this prophecy was given in St. Helena, California, October 1903. Decided action to be taken now. In reading in your hearing, the enemy of souls has sought to bring in the supposition that a great reformation was to take place among Seventh-day Adventists, and that this reformation would consist in giving up the doctrines which stand as the pillars of our faith and engaging in a process of reorganization. Were this reformation to take place, what would result? The principles of truth that God in his wisdom has given to the remnant church would be discarded. Our religion would be changed. That's been fulfilled. The foundational principles that have sustained the work for the last 50 years would be accounted as error. That's been fulfilled. A new organization would be established. That's been fulfilled. We were born into and we transitioned into the new Seventh-day Adventist Church. Books of a new order would be written. And as I share once again, when they were writing... The Great Controversy series, they changed it to Spirit of Prophecy. These are the books here. So the original name of the Great Controversy is the Great Controversy series. But they, weren't, they went and changed it to the Spirit of Prophecy 1, 2, 3, 4. Then they turned around and man began to rewrite her writings and named it Conflict of the Ages, which are books of the New Order. This is what's being discussed right here. Continuing. Books of a New Order would be written. A system of intellectual philosophy would be introduced. The, founder, the founders of this system would go into the cities and do a wonderful work. The Sabbath, of course, would be lightly regarded as also the God who created it. Nothing would be allowed to stand in the way of the new movement, New Seventh-day Adventists. The leaders would teach that virtue is better than vice, but God being removed, they would place their de dependence upon human power which without God is worthless. Their foundation would be built on the sand and storm and tempest, which sweep away the structure. Who has authority to begin such a movement? We have our Bibles. That prophecy was given in 1903. Then it was given again in 1904 in Tacoma Park, Maryland. And I will not go into that one. So here, ladies and gentlemen, we find the foundation and once again, everything in the blue was, is correct, it was dictated. Everything in the red is incorrect, not inspired. And they removed everything in the blue and inserted everything in the red. Black is correct. So in the next chapter, this is the, the chapter entitled, Chapter 37, the Scripture is a Safeguard. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them, Isaiah 8.20. So when we read the word law, it's actually referring to the Torah and to the testimony, the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. The principles of Elohim are di directed to the scriptures as their safeguard against the influence of false teachers and the delusive power of spirits of darkness. Satan employs every possible device to prevent men from obtaining a knowledge of the Bible. And that's who's responsible here, ladies and gentlemen. So just to give us a quick synopsis, this is what the chapter is referring to, and they turn around and insert everything in the red. So here, ladies and gentlemen, we find what's happened. And we'll end here with this, because it's quite a bit. I thought that this would be an encouraging time to share with us what's happening, what's coming, and understanding that Laudato Si will be fully fulfilled when Congress unites to pass it. Are you ready for the sealing? Are you ready to receive His eternal seal? Or are you ready to receive the seal and the mark of the beast that leads to oblivion? The choice is yours. Our Savior right now is willing to forgive us of our sins. But our hypothalamus has to be ready to repent, has to be ready to be open in order for Him to forgive us. It only takes you, brothers and sisters, to come to Him and to bow and ask for forgiveness. That His seal may be planted on your forehead. So when the death angel comes, he will see the seal of the living Yahweh upon you, the hope of glory. So this vessel, ladies and gentlemen, has to be prepared now. Your seal is in the forehead. There's not going to be no rapture. There's not going to be no rapture. That's a Jesuit teaching.
And I feel sorry for those that have been so blinded. For those who are present, we will conclude our studies and enter into prayer. And we will answer your questions. And we thank you for your patience. Don't forget to subscribe, like, ring the bell, so that you may receive the studies. Let us close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father who art in heaven, blessed be thy holy name. In the name of Yeshua we pray. Amen.